Now, I want you to know that for all the people, all the fathers and mothers of faith that God used, there were men and women with limitations. Is it Abraham? The Bible said that Abraham was so full of faith. He had so much of faith, premium faith, that he was accounted to him unto righteousness. But guess what? Abraham also had a limitation. He heard the voice. He took the advice of his wife, Sarah. And you all know what happened at the end. Today, we all are still suffering from that act. He felt that he wanted to please Sarah at the expense of the covenant, at the expense of what God wanted to do. And because of him trying to please his wife, he fell short. But God did not take his promises out of the life of Abraham. God still made him the father of many generations. And till tomorrow, we still sing Abraham blesses a man. Is it David? David committed the abominable sin of adultery. That was not all. He became a murderer in the process because he was trying to use sin to cover sin. Each time you try to use sin to cover sin, you are deepening your well in sin. You are trying to dig deeper in sin. You can't use sin to cover sin. You can only use righteousness. You can only trust in God. You can only place your faith on the finished work of Christ if you want to be washed and to be clean, if you want to be sanctified. You can. David wanted to use sin to cover sin. Because he slept with Uriah's wife, he ordered for Uriah to be killed and God was displeased. But David came broken and he was so sober and God did not take away the kingdom from his lineage. Because God is a merciful God. If God was not to be trusted, it wouldn't start with you. He would have done things that would have made our fathers of faith, men of old, to detrust him. So God can be trusted. I want you to know that God does not call you by your limitations. He calls you by your possibilities. There is so much God wants to do with you. Sin will make you run away from God. Yes, run. You should run. But run to God and not run from God. Anytime you sin, run to God. Have you noticed that it is when you commit that atrocity, that sin, that you begin to feel so guilty whenever you want to pray? Do away with that guilt. That is the devil. The devil does not want you to pray because he knows that in that prayer you will find your footing. The devil does not want you to listen to messages because he knows when you do, you will find your footing. The devil does not want you to understand that righteousness is not an act but a nature. So he will fight every knowledge that comes across you so that you will not know that righteousness is a nature and because you believe in Jesus, he has clothed you with that nature. So the devil will keep corrupting everything that will bring light to you. But light has come and the devil cannot stop it. For you to even know that God has great plans for you, have you noticed that when you think that you are in your lowest moment, that is when God shows you greater pictures of your destiny. He begins to show you greater pictures of your tomorrow. Maybe when you committed a sin that you are so sober and so full about and you are depressed, God will begin to show you you healing the sick, you raising the dead, you doing mind-blowing things. That's to tell you that God is saying leave the past because he is no longer there. The past should be a place for reference and not a place for residence. Don't stay there. Great men don't remain in the past. God is not angry that you sinned alone, but he is angry that he's much more angry that you have refused to move on. The Bible says in Micah 7 verse 8, Rejoice not over me, my enemy, for when I fall seven times, I will rise again. It is time for you to rise. Don't magnify the devil. Don't stay in your sin. Move on and trust God for greater grace so that you won't even sin anymore because it is possible. So I want you to know that God keeps showing you pictures of your future because he knows that you should be in your future. Harness your today and prepare for your tomorrow. Don't lie in that mistakes. Your mistakes don't define you. Your mistakes don't qualify you in the sight of God. It will only demean you because that's what the devil wants it to be. God can even turn your mistakes to miracle. You just have to let go and let God. It is time. Yes, you've done things. Leave it aside. Leave it aside. When you come to God in prayer, open up your heart to Him. Let Him heal your heart. Let Him show you ways you can embrace salvation so the devil will not make a mess out of your life. Regardless of whatever you have done, God has come for you today. I know a route in God that you will journey through and you will never miss your way. It is called the route of mercy. Hold on to the horn of mercy and say, Lord, yes, I've failed you before, but I am willing not to fail you again. Hold on. Stand upon this knowledge, the knowledge I have shared now, the knowledge of Christ, the knowledge of the righteousness of Christ. Stand upon, leverage on the finished works of Christ so that you can move on. Don't allow the devil hold you. Yes, I know you stole, but you are no longer a thief. 
Yes, I know you lied, but God does not see you as a liar. He sees you as my beloved. So see yourself like that. Humility means seeing yourself the way God sees you. Mediocrity is not Christianity. Lowlessness is not Christianity. Don't think lowly of yourself. So when you fall, stand up quickly. Don't stay there because the base is not for you. The Bible says he has made our feet like hind feet and therefore we walk upon our high places. Habakkuk 3 verse 9. It is time for you to walk upon your high places. It is time for you to stand upright. Come boldly to God because you are a king. Don't allow your sin hold you down. Don't be depressed. Depression is an attire of the devil. Glory is the regalia of saints. And when you come to God, instead of running from him the way Adam did, no, you will run to God. And for your nakedness, he will not give you physical clothes, but he will clothe you with glory. And he will make the devil mad because the devil is supposed to see you condemned, but hello, you are no longer condemned. You are now redeemed. Sweetheart, God wants to do so much with your life. Let go and let God. God bless you.